Yo, this is Patrick, Marco, Guy in the Cube, and in this video, Marco and I are gonna show you how to debug DAX with variables. Stay tuned. Okay, so DAX, variables. So I just attended this insane Mastering DAX class from this guy. Uh, and my He was blown. a good guy, he was a good guy. <laughs> I thought I knew Dax, I don't know Dax, right? But it was a great class. And so uh, I learned something, oh, it was day one maybe, he was using all these crazy variables and he was like, you know what? You could debug Dax with variables. And I was like, what? No, you can't. And so I went home, because I had a challenge. One of my customers was like, Patrick, I wanna show, like if I choose a slicer, yeah. I want my string to show how many items I select in that slicer. Like, yeah. I was like, but they're in the slicer, right? It's in the but slicer. You want to repeat this oh. documentation, of, you know? Yes. Yeah. And I was confused. So I started writing some DAX, right? I started writing it and I got it working, but then I ran into an error when I tried to do something in it and I couldn't figure it out. So the next day at the class, I said, hey, Marco, help me fix this. All right. So let me show you. I'm going to show you my okay. DAX, all right? Yeah. So you guys know how I like to do what? Head over to my laptop. Okay, so this okay. is what I did, Marco. Okay, let's see. Take it out. So I wrote this DAX. I'm so the proud of this. I'm really <clears throat> proud of this DAX, okay? Sure, you sure? I'm, I, I'm so excited about this. Uh, you ready? Yeah, ready. Okay, here you go. Look at that. It's beautiful, right? Mm, no. I, I mean, this is not DAX. Well, well it's got like count this, rows and selected This values. is something that Power BI accepts in the editor window but it is not DAX. The first thing you have to do before showing some code to me is format the code. There you go. I'm gonna let you drive. Like I said, I thought I knew DAX. Don't know DAX. Look, okay. if you copy the code you have yeah. here in the clipboard, Control C, okay? Yeah. Then you go to Internet Explorer, you go to DAXformatter.com here. What is this strange DAXformatter.com? What this is this? is a website where you paste the, your code that is not DAX is and not... you generate good DAX code. So wait a minute, wait formatted. a minute, wait a minute. Wait. Yeah. So what I wrote wasn't DAX. Yeah, it's something similar to DAX, but it's not. I mean, I cannot read it, all right? I, I need something well formatted to read it. So yeah. something I learned in the first yeah. day of this class, and I think it was on the slide. It is not DAX if it's not formatted. I quote yeah. that guy right there. All right, okay. I mean, look at this code. Now you have an idea about where a function starts, ends. Uh, you, you you see how many functions you have. It's a little bit easier to understand. Yep. Okay. But, so let me show you. Let me show yeah. you my problem. Let me show you what's yeah, going well, on. Yeah, okay. Copy the code. Right. Copy. You can okay. copy. Okay. And then okay. paste the code in. Uh, oh, so here. get rid of mine because yeah. that's not DAX. Exactly. Now, control V. All right. And so you click OK, it. yes. All right, so here's my problem. Yeah. So it'll come back. So yeah. I'm getting this error because that's my concatenated string, right? Yeah. That's the all the colors that I select in this list, I want them to display up until that number, right? Like they yeah. can see, right? Up until this number right here, number yeah. three, and then after three colors are selected, say, and more or something yeah. like that, right? Okay. But I'm getting this error. <laughs> Let me show you this error. Hmm. And so I, you know, I, I went to sleep because I was just tired of tinkering with hmm. this. So like I quit. I give up, hmm. right? So let me show you. Here's calculation error in measure, blah, blah, blah. Text uh, consider using value or format function to convert one of the values. Yeah. So what I thought was, I have yeah. one comparison where I'm trying yeah. to say this is greater than yeah. that. I mm. think it's there, but I'm not sure. Okay. So I have a question. Uh, probably you figure out, I need to add value somewhere. 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 Where? I don't know, though. I don't know. Now, the problem is, uh, if you look at this code, uh, it's complex to understand where you have to go, right? I mean, there are too many things here. And even just understanding in which order these uh, expressions are evaluated uh, is a little bit hard. Okay. So can I reformat your code just? Uh, well, you already reformatted yeah. it. You know variables? You know <laughs> yeah, variables? Yeah, variables like, no. like if I'm writing I, a store procedure. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So you, we can try to reshape the code uh, to restructure the code. So not just formatting it, but uh, we try to rewrite the code so that uh, we have step by step in one variable. We do one little step. We create one part uh, in one step, one other part. I just reform the code without uh, removing the error by now so that we understand better what could be the problem. So Make let me sense? ask you this. So yeah. once I use these variables, can I see the result of what I'm putting in these variables? Exactly. Is that where the debugging comes in at? Exactly, because okay. once I right. have different variables, I would have several lines of code, like in our programming language, yep. like in VB yep. or many you other got languages. It. I got it. 
and I can uh, try to you know execute just one part. Okay. But now it's very hard because now if I want to execute one part of this, I have to remove this. I have to create another variable. It's a long process. Yep. So by can I do this? Yeah. 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 Okay. I'm, look, I'm hands off. Right? Okay. Hands well, off. Let me do this. So for example, here we have a select value. We need this here and we do this here. Okay, okay so let me ask you a question. Yeah. I got to ask you a question. So I just saw something happen, right? Yeah. How did you get that new line in the editor? Oh, this is a good question. Yeah. Uh, if you want to create a new line, if you want to, to want to go to a new line, you press shift enter. Did you guys hear that? Shift and enter. Don't press enter because it's going to execute the code. Uh, it's going to confirm the measure. And so you basically input the measure and that's it. But uh, shift enter, you stay in the editor and you go to a new line. Okay. All right. Go. Okay. All right. Then we do the select the colors here. So we call rows. Uh, so I can reuse these variables all throughout the code or within the context that they're in. Yes, yes. exactly. This one. Select the colors. So we are creating a variable colors that is, uh, for example, used here. Then we have the number of selected colors. We create another variable here. Then we will describe this later. Mm -hmm. colors. Ah. So what it looks like, what I'm, I'm guessing is going on, I don't want to disturb my man Marco right here. He's in his, his code in his DAC zone, right? He's in a zone. But what it looks like is happening is it's instead of and, and another advantage, it looks like there's a performance advantage to using these variables because I don't have to repeat the same piece of code over and over. I tuck it in a variable, it executes it once, it stores it there, and if it's in the right context, I can reuse it throughout the code. This is brilliant. This is brilliant. I don't know why I didn't think of this. You know, I'm pretty smart. I could have thought of this. Just a second. Uh, we are now creating the colors uh, where the colors is here. The colors is equal to um, okay. So this was, I showed that this was this one that now ah. I simplified this way. Yep. Because so I'm we replace, reusing, we replace yes. those with variables that we already populated. Exactly. exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah. And also the concatenate text here, mm -hmm. this entire concatenate text can be another variable, right? So I can cut this, call this list of the colors, which is a variable where I assign Is uh, step by step. See how he's breaking exactly. the code down? Instead of having this one big. Yeah. Instead of being messy... chunk of code, uh, even if you format it, it's still a single function and you don't understand what is uh, happening before, after. That so you is have what, to, that's yeah. it. So I don't know what, what when it was executed, what was executed next. Now exactly. I have it kind of like in a sequential order. Exactly. All right. Yeah. So now we go in a list of colors to display, which is equal to, and we have our if statement here, which is uh, this uh, if, uh, what are so for display is an if statement. This is the number of selected colors, num of selected colors, because we already mm -hmm. read this in, mm -hmm. a, in a variable. Mm -hmm. If this is greater than this, then we display that list of colors and more. Otherwise, we just use a list of colors because we replace uh, the concatenate text. Now, then I close the if statement, close the if statement, and I return the list of colors to display. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I format the entire code in DAX formatter. So it's not DAX yet. Hang on. Now He's about to make it DAX. It's going to be DAX. Now Here it's DAX. Go. Bam. Now we got now DAX. Now I copy this. And it's I like magic. This. He sprinkled pixie dust on top of my okay. DAX. Okay, now we finished to 
translate yeah. the code that we had at the beginning, a single function syntax, in a function in a in the same equivalent uh, measure. But now this measure can be executed step by step. You see, we have a number of lines that defines each single step. Yep. So first of all, it's easier to read. Yep. It's easier to read. I got it. If you go to DAX uh, to DAX formatter, you also see uh, more than uh, you know eight to ten rows that you can display. Yep. Uh, and here we have a complete view of the code. Sure. And one thing that is important is that I have a process that is I want to read the number of colors to display. The selected colors is the list of the colors in the current filter context. Then I count how many colors I have in the section. Then I display only the, the top N. Yep. And basically, this code should work. Everything is correct here. Okay. The problem is that uh, we still have the error that we had at the beginning. Yes. But now what is the power of uh, the variable, of using the variables? Instead of uh, using in return just the last variable, we can start evaluating the first, the second, and we can see which one produces the error, and we can locate the error this way. So we can start at the top, Return one, see what yeah. it is, see what it is. Like kind of, kind of exactly. like if you're in Visual Studio and you put a breakpoint and you debug F11, F11, Close a little to, bit, a little right, bit, right? I'm, okay, I'm stretching, I'm okay. stretching. Okay, a little bit. When when someone will create a debugger for that, <laughs> so it would be a better environment. Okay, okay. we have a better <laughs> okay. environment right. now. Uh, at this point, I can go back here and mm -hmm. I can do exactly because now I still have the same error okay yep. mm -hmm. and the error is uh, the same value form blah 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 got it but now if I say okay let me try to return just the first variable here okay first variable here return control B I click enter and now I see the error or not I don't know mm -hmm. let me try this one here we go I still have the error if I look at the details of the error, now I see value or format. But you know what? Now I know exactly where is the problem is. Um. Because if I can look at this code, I can focus on, wait a minute. I'm using selected value here, trying to retrieve the current selection from one column. Yes. And what I want to do, I want to return, um, I want to return um, a numeric value for this. Yes. Because I, uh, later on, I will use... Uh, the num of colors to display in in in, um, in top n. Okay. And now also because this uh, measure should return a single value that is a number, I have the same error. So what I can do is value of this. Okay. Make sense? Mm -hmm. yes, so yes. If I click enter now, this code returns uh... the number of the colors. Why the number of the colors? Because now I'm returning num of colors to display. Uh, let's get, for example, the selected colors. Okay. Now, select colors is a list of values. So I'm not able to display a list of values sure. in a measure. Yep. But I can get the next one, which is the number ah, of selected colors. Yeah. So this way I say, OK, this is the number that I have in the current selection, which is your uh, selection here, yes. color. Mm -hmm. Now, because you have uh, no selection at all, I see 10. Okay. But look at this. If I click here, I have one. If I click here, I have two. Then I have three and so on. Yep. Right? Okay. So I'm testing my measure step by step this yes. way. Yeah. Now, uh, let me see where we are. So we have, we are here. So we, we tested the, the number of colors to display, the number of selected colors, uh, uh, the colors, again, is a um, list, so we cannot display sure, it. We can sure. count yeah, how many yeah, rows we yeah. have. But this list, the concatenated X, is exactly what we need. Yes. So let's let's test this again. So I go here, and I paste this code here. So at this point, I have the list of the colors that I selected. So if I uh, enter this, you see um. that uh, every color I select is in the list. But now... I always uh, stop the third, the first uh, three colors because yeah. I had the selection here. Mm -hmm. And what we wanted to do is I want to see there are more. Yes. Right. Yes. Which is what we do in the last step in this if statement. Uh... So if I now use this one, here we go, because I'm selecting five and a silver, red, and more. What but if I, if I write yeah. five. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Five. What if I select another one? It Color. will be and more. Bam. 
right? You like so it? we use some variables. Well, Marco used some variables. I didn't use variables. <laughs> Marco used some variables. And we stepped through our code. We stepped yes. through our DAX, DAX one little call at a time. And after that, we're able to solve the problem. We just needed value. We just yes. needed value. We need to wrap that guy value. where this was the problem. That's by using the code step by step, we isolated the, the problem and we understood what would the value function. Perfect. What do you guys think? You got comments? You got questions for me or my man? Marco. Right? <laughs> Post them in the comments below. And if you like this video with Marco and myself, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. As always, from Adam, Marco, and Patrick, right? Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Hi, Adam. <laughs>